Welcome to Nuclear Chemistry Part 3. Now that we're familiar with the different types of radioactive decay, it's important to learn about half-lives, because not everything decays at the same rate. Let's get started. Okay? So the half-life is a very literal term. Right? It's the time for one half of the sample to decay. All right, okay, let's see. Oh, we'll go two, one half of its original mass. All right, I guess it'd be, ah, I think I mixed, right? Time for the sample to decay to one half its original mass. We'll go with that. Okay, so T one half, the half life. All right, so let's look at a chart here. So here we have the mass of iodine, 131 in milligrams. And so we see that we started with 80 milligrams of iodine, 131. Now, as we look, eight days later, notice now we have one half of the original sample. So if we look here, Right? So there we go. So there's the first half-life. Okay, so it took us eight days, right? The 80 milligram sample, it took it eight days to get to 40 milligrams. Now, if we wait another eight days, now we're down to 20 milligrams. So notice here, right? So from here to here, this was the second half-life. Right, so here we go. This was T one half, and then here was the first half life. Okay, and then last but not least, we'll look here, and we can get all the way down to ten. And so once again, we've waited another eight days, and so now in the third half life the sample drops from 20 milligrams to 10 milligrams. So notice as there's less and less sample, there's less to lose. But the half-lives always remain the same. All right. So now let's um, look at some different um, radioisotopes and compare their half-lives. So we'll look on the next page. And we can see that half-lives are independent of the type of radioactive decay, right? So we can see here some gamma emitters, barium-131, right? A little over 11 days. And then here's cobalt-60, five years, over five years. Uranium, you know, 10 to the ninth years, right? So there's no relationship between the type of radiation and the half-life. So Alpha, beta, gamma, positron emitters, they, it depends on the nucleus. They can have short or very long half-lives. There's no relationship there. All right, so let's practice. Let's see here. So let's consider that we have a 100 gram sample of chromium-151, right? So there's chromium-151 right there. We see, right? that it has a half-life of 27.8 days. So, how long would it take half of the sample to decay? Very simple, 27.8 days. How many grams of chromium-51 will remain after 83.4 days? So, the trick here is that we, um, we have to figure out how many half-lives, all right? So I will always give you whole number half-lives. So, right, so we need the number of half-lives, right? So we take the time and divide it by the half-life. So if we have 83.4 and we 
divide that by 27.8 days. Okay, then I'm guessing this should come out. Hmm, I don't have this, so we'll do it on the side. So it's got to be 3, I would think. Yeah, okay, so we would get three half-lives. All right, so now we can um, estimate of the 100 grams of chromium, right? So we started with 100 grams, and after the first half-life, we will have 50 grams. After the second half-life, we will have 25 grams. And after the third half-life, we will have 12.5 grams of chromium-51. There we go. All righty. So the main thing is to think about the chart on the previous page, right? So we determined that there are three half-lives. With each half-life, we lose half our sample. So 50, 25, 12 and a half. Alrighty, now let's look at this next question. Considering only the half-lives of, let's see, we'll do carbon-14 and barium-131. Okay, so let's go back up to our chart. Okay, so we're only going to compare the half-lives. Alright, so we have one that's in days and one that's in years. Which would be more um, appropriate for internal use in a medical test? Well, it would definitely be the, bar the barium-131 because the half-life is only 11.6 days. So if the patient was to receive a, a medical, a nuclear medicine treatment, right, within about four or five half-lives, within 60 days, all of the barium-131 will have decayed and the patient will no longer be exposed, right? Carbon-14 with its 5,730 year half-life, right? This is too long, right? There'd be too much, there's too much exposure to the patient, right, for medical use. Okay, um, now let's look here. Alrighty, so what percent of carbon-14 remains in a sample estimated to be 17,000 years old? Alrighty, well once again we look at the number of half-lives. Right, so here's the time divided by the half-life and once again we see that we have about three half-lives. All right, so here we'll just go in terms of percentages, right? So we have a hundred percent of the sample. So after the first half-life, we would have 50 percent. After the second half-life, we would have 25 percent. And after the third half-life, we're back down to the 12 and a half percent. So, once again, so you start to get used to when you're working with um, when you're working with half-lives and calculations. You just want to keep thinking in terms of a half, and then another half, and then another half. So you want to think in terms of quarters, and eighths, and then sixteenths and 30 seconds, right? So then you want to think in terms of multiples, right? One over two to the n. So think in terms of the powers of two. And then you want to be able to convert these to percentages, right? So anytime we have a half, think 50%, right? Quarter, think 25. Eighth, 12 and a half, right? Then we get down here six and a quarter, three and three quarters, right? So it, um, as far as math skills, 
as long as you can do your um, exponents of 2 and convert to percentages, you're going to be in good shape. All right. Now let's look at the last page here for this part of the series. And um, let's see what's going on here. Okay. Shown below is a portion of a decay series for plutonium-231. Excuse me, 241. The series has two kinds of arrows. Shorter arrows pointing to the right, longer arrows pointing to the left. Label the arrows to indicate the type of nuclear decay that is occurring. And then give the elemental symbol for ZNA to indicate the resulting isotope um, of the decay series, right? So where did we start? We started at plutonium. 241, and then we notice, right, that um, it goes, right, so the same, there's our atomic number, f right, would be 94, and then what did we do? We went to 95. So what we, can we see? We see that a neutron became a proton, and we lost a beta particle, right? So there is our beta decay. Okay, so what isotope? Let me see. Alrighty. And so I guess that would make, yeah, that would make Neptunium 241. Okay. Now we look and we see that we have a loss here, right? We have a loss of um, the mass number. Oh, okay. And there we go, from 95 to 93. Huh, that's, that seems weird to me, but we'll just keep going. There's our alpha, and then we have another alpha. Oh, I see, I made a mistake. <laughs> I put the axes here, and I didn't do a good job. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're going to have to ignore these. Sorry about that. Alrighty. So then this would here, this would be, right, 237. And that would be minus 2, 239. Oops, 39. Okay, we'll just keep going. And then the last part here is then we would have the beta. Alrighty. So what do we end up with then? Well, the Z is 292, yeah. So this would be uranium is 92, and we would end up with 233 for the mass number. So that is the answer to, right, the element that is at the end of the Duquesne series. Alrighty. Now let's look at this last one here for practice. What is the half-life of a radionuclide with the following decay curve, right? So here's the sample remaining. So remember the key here is to look, we started at 100%, so we wanna get to 50. So if we look here, right, we find 50%, and then we look down, and we see this is the time in years, so the half-life would be approximately four years. Alrighty. So that pretty much um, concludes what the kind of questions that we could ask about half-life, right? How much sample is left, figuring out the total number of half-lives, and that sort of thing. Please take some time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.